Hello everyone, this is Chadillac1, and today I'm going to discuss with you some concepts of inheritance with Unreal Engine 4 C++ translating from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4 to help you everyone understand this. And also I'll give a little bit of tutorial basics of C++ in general. So deep breath, and let's dive in. Before we begin discussing Unreal Engine 4 C++, I want to discuss with everyone of how Unreal Engine 3's inheritance kind of will correlate with Unreal Engine 4's inheritance, kind of connecting the dots a bit. As you can see, Actor. Actor kind of owns a lot of objects. A lot of objects inherit Actor. So we'll take a look at one of them in particular. So we'll take a look at UTPON. As you can see, UTPON is extending or inheriting from UDKPON. So we'll take a look at UDKPON and extends from GamePon. GamePon extends from Pawn and Pawn extends from Actor. So as you can see, a lot of objects inherit Actor. Actor kind of owns quite a bit of things. And Actor does quite a few things. For example, as you can see here, it has a lot of physics, movement, and particularly crucial functions. So let's take a look at one in particular. So let's go to Control F, Set Location. As you can see, it's a function that has a parameter for a new vector called new location. Basically, what set location does, obviously, is set the location of an object. Say if you want an object in one spot, you want to set it to a very specific spot and so X, Y, Z coordinate, you could obviously do that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and move on to Unreal Engine 4. So let's go ahead and launch. And we'll make our game a, let's take a look here. Let's try code third person. Just some basic code to kind of see what I'm going to be doing here. So we'll call it my game. Create project. All right, I'm going to pause it for a second while it loads. All right, now it's all ready. So let's go ahead, open up the My Game project, and open up the source, and open up the My Game folder. And as you can see, you see a lot of mygame.h, mygame.cpp, and all kinds of other .h and .cpp files. Basically, the .h file is a header file. It holds all the prototypes and all the particular variables most of the time that are not local. And also it has protected functions. Basically what protected means, it means that only this class can have these particular variables. And also it can only be accessed if it is inherited from it. So like for example, if I had a my game character .h and I made a class that inherited from my character .h. I could access these variables. Well, if I did not, I cannot access them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the .cpp file. As you can see, the constructor, which is what is opened up right away from the right off the bat when the game starts, has all these particular functions. Not functions, but uh, variables. So let's go ahead and take a look at our header file real quick. U property. U property basically tells this particular object to have a property inside the actual blueprint itself. So for example, if a Z property has a parameter with visible anywhere, meaning it can be seen anywhere inside the engine, it's blueprint read only, meaning it could only read it, not actually write it over whatever it could possibly be. And it also has a category, like kind of like a sub kind of like a subfolder, should you say, called camera. And you could actually open up the camera like drop down menu and you can actually see it happen. You can actually see the uh, this um, pointer class of a uspring arm component called camera boom. Okay, let's discuss a sub object pointer. Basically, sub object pointer is kind of like a kind of like a native uh, Unreal Engine 4 C++ thing to say, I'm going to get a native function from this engine. I want to make it a pointer called from a class called uspring arm component, and I'm going to name it camera boom. And that's basically what that particular U property does. So also let's discuss a little bit more depth here. Let's talk about what are we talk about here, Chad. We're talking about a little bit right now about my, my game character deriving this little colon here means it derives from a particular class called a character. The a is kind of like a suffix for uh, Unreal Engine 4. Most of the custom classes actually have this. So let's go ahead, let's go to the definition of a character. And you can see a character derives from a pawn, 
We'll go to A pawn. Oops, hang on. Nope. I want to go to definition. And A pawn derives from actor. As you can see, it's kind of the it's kind of simple to kind of translate from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4 to kind of see how the inheritance kind of works. You just kind of think this little colon thing means extend, just like this. As you can see, like extends from another class. And like this, it's just a colon with a public actor because it's publicly accessible. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a function here real quick on our next lesson and let's make some things happen from a class that derives from this. All right, so let's begin. Basically, we're going to try to do one particular thing. So in this particular my game character, we're going to overwrite a function called virtual void tick delta oh, float delta time override. Basically what override does, it's kind of like a little bit of a simpler thing in Unreal Engine 4 to make things simple to override virtual functions. Where does this function come from? Obviously you guessed it, it comes from actor. As you can see, we'll go down inside a character, we'll go down all the way here. Let's see here quick. Actually we shall go to, not only this, let's go a little bit farther down. Let's go to a pawn. Let's go ahead and find it. Here we go. See virtual void tick float delt seconds override on here too. It actually comes from actor. It really does come from actor class. So let's go ahead and go back to my character.h. Let's take a look here quick. So what are we gonna do here in particular with tick? If you don't if you don't remember what tick is in Unreal Engine 3, basically what tick does, it's kinda like a it's kinda like a, what does every frame per second. Like every time the frame goes through, it's gonna do something. Like for example, I like I want to make a counter. You would want to do that in tick. So if you do like uh, for example, you know, do a counter like, like make a variable like counter plus plus, and it's an integer. And you want to go up every frame. Tick would be the purse, not purse, but the function to do that. So let's go ahead and do something in particular. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's make another particular variable here, quick. Mm, nah. Let's go ahead and uh, do something with the uspring arm component. We are going to do something in particular. So let's go ahead and go back to the C++, the CPP file. And let's go ahead and go all the way down to, to the bottom here quick. And we're going to do void a my game character scope tick float delta time. All right, so let's go ahead and do something into a particular thing. So let's take a look at the uspring arm component. And actually, first of all, let's go ahead and uh, start up real quick, see if it builds. We'll build this quick, and I'll kind of show you in Engine as well what will happen. Because you can compile this in-game. It may take a little bit because it's a fresh build, so I'll come back to you when we get everything going. All right, it is all built. Let's go ahead and hit play on the local window debugger and see what we have here. All right, got to load up a few things quick. It shouldn't take too long. Just got to discover the assets. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to blueprints. We'll open up my character. Let's take a look at the defaults real quick. So, as you can see, camera. Camera has a particular folder. As you can see here in the .h file, we set a category to be camera for the camera boom and for the follow camera and for the base turn rate and base lookup rate. So are they there in the actual defaults? Yes, they are. Right here, base eye height. Lookup rate, turn rate, socket offset, target arm length, everything. So what we're going to do, we're going to make it by default 
we're going to try to see if we can make the target arm length be at a particular length. So this is what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and exile that. Open up our code. So we're going to go to our tick function. And we're going to say, where are we at here? All right. And target arm length is actually, let's take a look here quick. Before we go any further, let's go to diff here quick. Control F. Target arm length. As you can see, it is a float inside uspring arm component. It is a float that tells how long is the arm length by default. So basically everything does really help with derivativity. So let's see. Let's say, let's say camera boom, that's what it is. Let's say camera boom. I'm going to do a member access. Well, it should show up here. Here we go. Should give us a few things, and we'll say target arm length. We're going to make it equal to, let's say, 100. 100.0 f. And we are going to go back in the engine and hit compile. Might take a little bit to compile real quick. I'll pause it and we'll be right. All right, it just got done compiling. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit the play button. And of course, the camera's a little too close. That means we actually set it to 100. And it actually works. So it's, what does it look like on without the 300? So we'll come out the, comment out the code. We'll compile it one last time. And it shouldn't take too long to compile this time. Easy to first compile takes a little longer, but this one doesn't take as long. And bingo. This is what 300 is. Obviously, we were able to access the particular class from Camera Boom and able to set the target arm length. But let me let me say a few things here real quick about this. Basically, if this is a pointer. We do this thing called a member access. Basically, what this is saying, we want to access some variables, a function, anything that is in Camera Boom. So basically, Camera Boom is just a class of uspring arm component. So if we say we want to do, we want to say we want to get a, the socket offset, we can do that. So we'll say Camera Boom. We could say socket offset. We could get that because is actually in here. Well, if I could get to that, here we go. It's actually right there. It's actually inside the uspring arm component. We can access anything we want in here. So, for example, if you want to say on register, tick component, has any sockets, relative socket location, yes, we could access those. If Since it's a pointer, we could use this thing called a member access to get that. All right, well, Looks like I'm all up for time for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick, simple tutorial. It may not be too much, but I hope it really helped you guys about a little bit of inheritance and how everything is kind of connected together from one basic thing. Thanks for watching. Please comment and rate.